All right, so I'm outside of a Honda HRV. This is the 2020 LX model. So this is your base model. Um, easy ways to tell are the wheel pattern. It's gonna be a little bit different from the others. Doesn't offer roof rails or anything specific like that. So this is just your basic setup. Um, this is gonna start right around that 21,000 change mark. Um, now, it uses a 1.8 liter engine. This is actually the previous generation engine that was in the Civic. So it's really cool. I was actually a fan of that. I drove a car that had that engine. So uh, very dependable engine. Uh, now, moving to the front of the car, I'll point out, you've got LED daytime running lights. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your halogen beam headlights. Um, no fog lights on this. You can go up to the Sport model, though, if that's something you're looking for. And then I've got the classic grill set up right here on my Sport. It'll be, it'll be a, a smoked grill, so a little bit different look to it. Um, now, from the front, you can see, good-looking car. Uh, let's move around to the side here and show you a couple other things. Uh, six airbags in this car, so two front airbags, two side airbags, and two full curtain airbags. Safety overall is going to be a five-star crash rating, so you're in a good, safe vehicle. Sits a little bit higher off the ground than your standard vehicle, uh, and this is actually based off of a Honda Fit. So Honda Fit, as far as the frame goes, Honda Civic, as far as the engine goes. Um, so it shares a lot of capabilities with both vehicles. Your backup camera is right here. I love that it's a hatchback and it has good storage in the vehicle. Now, moving here, I'll point out that you do have a spare, and it's actually sitting right underneath here. So that's the first thing is it actually does offer a spare. This is a full diameter spare. So what that means is that it's the full height, just not the full width. So it's not like a donut where it's the you know even smaller than everything else will. Uh, now, storage-wise, you've got a lot of space to work here. If I needed to camp and things started getting bad, I could camp inside of my car, or if that's just how I prefer to camp, I could fit two human bodies there. Uh, I'm a six-footer. I'd probably have to lay diagonal or bend my legs, but I could absolutely do it. Now, the other thing I really like is related to storage in this vehicle is not only do those seats fold down, but these seats also fold up. So I can take them all the way up. So really cool that I can do that because now I could load in a TV, potted plants, I could load in my bicycle if I needed to and just cut the front wheel or I could take the front wheel off if it's got a quick release. So a lot of cool things as far as functionality in this car goes related to your storage. Uh, it's a typical cloth seat. I'm in a lunar silver vehicle, excuse me, uh, and I've got the gray interior in this car. So just so you know what I'm looking at. Uh, the floorboards are always going to be black, uh, and your dashes and your, uh, your doors are always going to be black here too just to prevent glare uh, and, of course, dirt in the bottom of the car. It's a standard seat, so it's not powered, uh, meaning that you've got the bar set up to slide front and forward, and then to lift the seat and to lower the seat, and then your back control as far as adjusting it front and back. I do have power windows, power locks, power mirrors, so all of my controls are gonna be right here for that. So let's go ahead and hop in this car and crank her up, um, and we'll show you a couple things. It is a classic keyed start, so I will point that out to you. Uh, if that's a game ender for you, just be aware of it. Uh, you're gonna wanna climb a couple models because the uh, next model up the Sport also offers a keyed start. Now over here, I've got my vehicle stability assist um, that works in my traction control. So if I go into a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel has better traction. This is always on unless I press and hold this to turn off. Next to that is my tire pressure monitoring light. So this is if I wanted to reset it, I could press and hold this button to do so. And then above that is my econ button. Now my econ button, if I turn this feature on, let me adjust my steering wheel here, uh, I'll press it, you'll see a green leaf pop up there. Now what this does is it gives me better gas mileage but in doing so, it's a give and take system. So I'm gonna give up some of my acceleration off the pedal and my AC unit isn't gonna blow quite as hard when I'm using this feature. Uh, but I will get better gas mileage. And that's all relative to the driver on how much because it depends on how you drive the car. But to get that extra, you know, three, four, five miles per gallon, it is very possible. Now, moving on to the steering wheel, you've got your audio controls as far as your volume. Uh, jumping left and right will switch between like your tracks uh, or your favorite stations. So I'll turn the audio on this car. It's not a touchscreen, but it does have a display. Um, so I can control everything here, and then I could jump between my favorite stations, which I'm using the button to do, uh, or affect the volume. And then Source will jump between FM, AM. Uh, Dakar does have, offer a CD player. I think this might be my last car that does. Uh, and then I've got USB controls down here. So if I wanted to you know, plug my phone in and listen to music, or if I want to go Bluetooth and listen, um, or if I want to put a thumb drive in there, I could do that, and it would switch between these if I had those you know, plugged in. So source button right there is how that works. Uh, back here, you can see my lighting control. So to turn the lights on and off, pretty simple setup. Uh, and then over on the other side, I've got my windshield wipers pulled down for the front and then affect the back right here. Now on your steering wheel, uh, you already saw the left side. So moving over to the right side, is just your classic cruise control setups. If I press cruise, you'll see cruise main come on there. So it's letting me know it's now ready to be set. And then when I get the speed, I could press set, cancel, resume. So easy to understand as far as functionality on the car. Now down here, you'll see you have your Bluetooth control. So to answer a call, to hang up or go back, and then voice command. So pull this and say call so-and-so, that sort of thing. So very easy to use. They're very easy and you can feel grippies on the back of them. So your fingers will find them pretty easy. 
All right, moving over to the stereo unit. It's a classic setup. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't want a bunch of frills because you just don't want to deal with that, uh, this is a great car for you. Um, it, it, you know, it's very easy to understand radio, media. So if I got a CD player or USB or Bluetooth, that's what I hit. So I'm really only using a couple buttons, turn it completely off, um, turn it back on, and then my volume knob right here if I want a volume knob. Switch between my tracks or I can do it, like I said over here, and my volume controls. Uh, and then on the other side, my Bluetooth setup. So if I'd like to add a phone, just toggle down to that, press yes, make sure your Bluetooth's on, and then hit select, and it'll search for your phone, uh, and then it'll set it up for you. So it's easy to set up. And then my back button if I need to back out of a screen. So very easy to understand. If I need to adjust anything, the clock is the very first setting in there. So changing the clock if you got the wrong time, not hard to do. Um, down below that, um, my AC control, so hot and cold, how much air, where you want it to go. And you'll see that I've got AC, recirculate or not, uh, and then my rear defrost. Uh, now, my shifter is right here. I can set that up. I will point this out. If you pop that out, you can put your key in there. You can shift the car. So it just allows you, like if you're rolling it up onto something because the car won't start, let's say uh, for some reason the car won't start, but you need to be able to roll it up uh, either off the road or onto like a flatbed, that's where this comes into play. So that's what that feature is. If I throw the car in reverse, I want to show you your backup camera. Backup camera not only is, is great, it's in color, it's nice and big, but you also got three different views that I can toggle between. So if I press on this button, I've got a wide angle, about 170 degrees, classic backup camera, no manipulation, and then one aim straight down. Now these dotted lines you'll see, this is where the hatch is going to open to. So it really works out right here. So if I'm backing up to my garage, it's raining, I want to leave just enough space to where this dotted line isn't passed over to where I can open the hatch and still get my belongings out. The solid line up here, which you'll see on all three screens, is just for like if I'm parallel parking to leave me and the car behind me enough space to be able to get in and out. So that's what those two lines are. And you can turn those lines on and off if you want, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, these aren't dynamic, meaning that if I cut the wheel, it doesn't cut with me. So these are going to be fixed lines. You're going to want to climb models if you want the dynamic guidelines for the car. So throw that back off. Parking brake is electronic. To set it, just put your foot on the brake and lift up. When you do that, it'll throw a red parking brake symbol right there and let you know. I'm going to throw that off. Now the button below that is your brake hold. So how brake hold is, what it's really set up for here is if I'm in stop and go traffic, it'll hold the brake for me. So if I put my seatbelt on, because it is required that you're wearing the seatbelt for this feature work, I'll press brake hold and you'll see brake hold pop on there. So I'm going to throw the car in drive and you'll see hold is on. Now when hold is on, what that means is it's holding the brake while I'm in the car. So I'm not touching my foot to any of the pedals right now and the car's in drive and we're not moving. When I want to move forward, I just touch the gas, it moves forward and then when I come to a complete stop again, it'll say hold again. Now it's holding it, I can let my foot off. So you can see where if I moved five feet and stop and go traffic, that's the function of this. Now, let's say you're using it in a drive-thru and I go to take my seatbelt off, you're gonna see some things happen here. I take my seatbelt off, oh my God, it just disengaged that feature, but what it does is it turns your parking brake on while the car's in drive so you don't roll into anything. Because a lot of times I know if you're like most people, you gotta to reach out the window when you're at the, the drive-thru, you gotta have to take your seatbelt off because you're just not big or long enough to do it. So that's what brake hold is and how it works. You've got a sliding armrest that you can use right here, and it flops open right here. So I've got some extra storage down there, uh, and then I've got space down here where I can set up uh, whether I've got a shallow drink or a deep drink. So it's just kind of cool that it does that, and then you just press down on it to, to let it sink in there. Um, so know that you have that on both sides. I can do it on either side. So that's actually a really cool setup. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, other than that, it's a classic car, what I call these are new car standard features, you know, your standard map lights, your mirrors, uh, your controls like that. That's what it looks to look out the back. So if you're looking over your shoulder or if you're wondering what, hey, if I'm looking through the mirror, what's it going to look like looking out? You've actually got good visibility in this car because it is based off the fit. I would argue the fit has better visibility, uh, but this car isn't bad. I mentioned earlier, six airbags, two front, two side, two full curtain in the back. Uh, so five-star overall crash rating on this vehicle. Uh, 1.8 liter engine, four disc brakes. Um, it, it's a great car. Um, you'll see on the test drive, it's it's not the most powerful, uh, but it'll get you where you want to go. Um, so yeah, we'll go over that here in a little bit. If you have questions. All right, so I'm inside of a 2020 Honda HRV, and this is the LX model, this is the base model. Let me turn the AAC down here. Uh, we're gonna take it for a ride and just gonna give you a feel for what it sounds like, feels like, how it drives, things like that. So let's get moving in this car. Initial takeoff to the car. It's actually not super loud. Uh, cool fact about this car is it's actually based off the Honda Fit. So the chassis and everything comes from something Honda's been doing. Um, for, for quite a while. It's a, it's a little bit of a combo. It's got the old Honda Civic engine uh, in it, so the 1.8, um, and then it uses uh, a lot of the features of the Honda Fit. So this is kind of a, a combo of a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a few different cars. Uh, so I actually kind of like it, because I used to own the Civic that had this engine in it, uh, and I thought it got up to speed and did everything great. So let's give it some gas here and see what we can do. So you can 
taking care of the CVT revving up. And I'm up to 60 now. Um, so as far as like a smaller car goes, could it have a little bit more get up? Yeah, it could. Uh, but, but for the average driver who's just trying to get down the road or make sure they can merge on and off the highway, you'd be 100% fine in this vehicle. I don't think you would have much to worry about uh, from that standpoint. Um, as far as road noise goes in this car, I'm on a pretty smooth ride uh, road right now, but I'll get up to highway speeds here momentarily. Uh, and that way we can get a really good strong feel for that. Handling the car, it's typical Honda, so the steering wheel is pretty tight, which I actually like, because uh, in the event that you, you run into an issue, uh, you're gonna have quick reaction time uh, for not only yourself, but the vehicle too. Um, so when it comes to safety-wise, I, I would consider that a plus. All right, let's give it some gas and get back up to speed again. All right, so I've got it to the floor. I do have the Econ mode on. So you can hear the CVT revving up again, and we're at 60 miles an hour, and I'm gonna let off there. So it'll get moving. Um, I mean, you're not gonna win any drag races, but I don't think that you're buying this vehicle for that specific reason. More than likely, you're looking at this car because you want something small, compact, but still has some uh, some abilities as far as sitting a little bit higher off the ground. Uh, and maybe I want something that just feels a little bit sportier. Maybe I want an SUV, but I don't want the gas mileage of a larger SUV. This is a great option. Uh, and the safety in this car is good too. So if I'm gonna be putting family members uh, or, or loved ones or pets in this vehicle, I can trust that they'll be safe. Uh, so when it comes to that part, I really do like this car for those reasons. If I was gonna put a knock on this car currently, it would just be that it doesn't quite have as much get up as I would prefer. Um, but, you know, for the average person, like I said, you'd probably be just fine in this vehicle. Um, as far as my road noise goes, we're gonna get on the highway right now, uh, and we're gonna check that out. All right, so I'm up to about 70 miles an hour right now, uh, and I'm roading over a, like an overpass. You can feel the occasional bump of when the, the lane, the, the concrete splits. Um, as far as road noise goes though, I imagine you can hear me just fine. Uh, if I had somebody in the car with me, I would be able to hear just fine too. Um, I'll throw the uh, stereo on just to see, hey, you know, do I have to crank it really up or anything? Yeah, I can hear everything normally. Um, this is perfect because they're talking right now, I would imagine. Uh, if I was going through Bluetooth, this is what it would sound like to have somebody talking to. So when it comes to that standpoint, I should be able to hear who I'm talking to without, you know, being the guy who has it blaring. So, related to the car, pretty smooth ride, a little bit of road noise, you know, but I don't think you're uh, you're going for a luxury line vehicle here. You're going for, hey, I need something that's gonna be cost effective, give me the spacing I want, and still allow me to be active in my lifestyle. Um, as far as smoothness goes, I could see myself taking a, a pretty good long road trip in this vehicle and being just fine. Uh, it's got all my basic setups and features that I would want, you know, as far as, you know, my cruise control settings if I'm gonna take a long trip. Um, the one thing I don't like about this car is it doesn't offer Honda Sensing, uh, which is a feature that I really, really, really do like. Um, so I would have loved to seen that been in every single model of this vehicle, uh, but as it stands, it's not in the base model of the vehicle. So just something to be aware of. Um, you know, you could look into a Honda Fit if you did want those features, which would actually bring your cost point down, but then you're giving up some of your ground clearance uh, and a little bit of the sportiness to the look. But I will say the Honda Fit does have uh, more cabin space storage. Um, this car really falls into the, hey, I'm looking at a CRV, but I don't know if I need that much space or I don't want to spend that much money. I would say this is probably a great option for you. So as we head back to the dealership in this car, my overall consensus to the vehicle is as far as the drive goes, it's actually pretty nice, um, especially for the price point that you're paying. You know, you're starting right around that 21,000 mark. You're getting a good car. Um, you know, you, you could alternately look at a Civic if that was something you wanted to consider and be around the same price point. Um, and it, it's about the same size vehicle. Uh, it's just a different presentation, right? Uh, the argument I would say for the Civic though is it is gonna offer you a little bit more in the sense of Honda sensing and some of the other features. So what I can say about this car is value-wise, it's a good car. Uh, it's pretty quiet. It does lack a little bit of power, which I would like, but as far as the everyday average driver, you can get up to speed, you can get on the highway, you can do all the things that you would want to. Um, it would just be nice if it had a little bit more, right? Um, other than that, I would say, I think it's a good value car. It offers, um, you know, a great safety rating, even though it doesn't offer Honda Sensing, which I do really like. Um, but overall, it's a good car, it's safe, it's gonna get you where you need to be. This is more of a point A to point B vehicle, uh, only because it is the base model. So, 
When all is said and done, I would recommend this car to a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. Whether you're a new driver and you just need a vehicle to get around, maybe you're gonna be trekking back and to and from college or something of that nature, or making a lot of moves because it's still early in life. Um, or maybe you're a little bit older and you're like, I want something to be able to you know, use a little bit of the cargo space, uh, but I don't want a huge SUV that's gonna kill me on gas mileage. Um, or I don't wanna spend a ton of money because I am on a fixed budget, so maybe this is a retiree. Uh, this car would work great for that person also. Uh, outside of that, you know, it has to fit your own needs and your budget, but I think that this car can work for a lot of different people. If you have questions about the car or anything, please do reach out. Please comment on the YouTube video. Secondarily, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Uh, and if there's something you wish I would shoot a video on, please let me know. I'm always looking for fresh content. I'm always looking to help people out. You can reach me uh, either via U YouTube and just comment on the channel, or you can call me, I'll be myself, 737-443-9555. Give me a call or text. I'd be more than happy to help you out if there's something you're running into.